Good morning and welcome to this week's video. In this week's video we're going to look at a harsh reality of aerial videography and one of the downsides and that might be that your drone footage is a little bit boring. <sighs> Never mind though because this video is going to look at ways that you can make sure that that's a thing of the past and all of the footage that you take from here on in will just be mind-blowing. With the advancements in drone technology there's really no reason for having footage that just doesn't stun your audience. What do you think about the backdrop? It's no bad is it? It's not a green screen. That's proper mountains right there. So you might think it's a little bit cheeky of me to accuse you of your drone footage being boring, but please believe me, I'm speaking from experience because I know that mine's was terrible when it first started. I couldn't go over the fact that I had a machine that could fly and my temptation was to just put it in the air, get it as high as I was allowed legally to do so, and then take footage of the hills and the mountains. There are several drawbacks to doing that. One is the higher the drone, Unless there's a foreground element there, it's very difficult to get any sense of speed or direction. Everything seems to move in slow motion. But more than that, it doesn't really tell a story. And that's our first tip, is to make sure that when you fly your drone, you've got an idea of a narrative in your head, or you're trying to convey a story throughout the video. So today, the story that I'm trying to convey is, we're back in Glencoe, unsurprisingly, but we're going to be taking the route down from Glencoe to Inverary, not only do you want to tell a story, but you need to plan how you're going to tell that story through your drone footage. And the easiest way to do that is to come up with a shot list. I'm working from a shot list today and it covers things like, you know, I want a high wide opening establishing shot. I want shots where the drone flies close to the water so you get a sense of speed. I want reveal shots where the drone rises up from in front of something to reveal something behind it. Whatever it is you want in your story, get it written down in a list, put it in your mobile phone, and as you go through the day, just tick them off, because I guarantee you, you can never have too much drone footage, but you most certainly can have far too little. So what else can we do? It's time to add in another layer of motion. I briefly mentioned it before, but if you can start to mix up, instead of just going from left to right, up and down, front and back, Start mixing them together and you'll see a different level of quality in your footage. For example, if you're doing a pan from left to right, why not try and raise the drone while you're doing that? If you can control the gimbal while you're doing that so that the camera's looking in a different orientation, it's just another level of complexity and interest to the viewer. It does take quite a bit of practice to get good at that, but the more you do it, the better you'll get and the more finer the details that you can start to pull and tease out of your footage. Give it a try, trust me you won't regret it. You've got all your footage, you've employed all the things we've learned in this video and everything's starting to look stunning. It's now time to take it back to the computer and put it together in a final edit. Some things that you want to think about when you're doing that is remember what we said at the start, we're trying to tell a bit of a story. So make sure whatever clips you use flow in, a, in an order that makes sense. Take your time to do that and always use the best parts of your clips. Don't just use the whole thing for the sake of it to fill something out. It's much better to have a short, sharp, impressive video than a long, boring, drawn out thing. And once you've done that, you then need to think about what sound you're going to put over it, what music you're going to put in the background. It's time to think a little bit about your sound design. I like to spend as much time on picking the right song for it as I do editing the visuals, because it's really, really key if you decide that you know, you're shooting a video where you've got the mountains covered in snow, there's mist and clouds. If I decide to put some sort of heavy dance track over the top of that, it's not going to make much sense. So, once you've done that, final things, you might want to colour grade it, put a LUT on it. As you may know, I use Motion VFX LUTs. I've mentioned that in previous videos. Uh, I find them to be just so easy to use and very, very impressive. I've never had an issue with any of the ones that I've used. And if you'd like to try them out yourself, there's a lot of free ones on their site that you can just download, just go with. Um, there's a link in the description below. Full transparency, I do get a little bit of a kickback if you do decide to go on and buy it, but it doesn't cost you anything extra and it just throws a little bit of support my way in the channel. So if you decide to do that, thank you very much. But that's almost us, but there's one other thing to think about and we'll get to that next. As I said at the start guys, I've made my own short film using all of the techniques and tips that we've talked about today. So I'm going to play that just now and hopefully as you watch through it, you'll see some of the things we've talked about. If at any point you have any questions on it, then please just leave a note in the comments below and I'll do my very best to get back to you. I think today I have yet to miss replying to somebody's comments, so thank you so much for them. But anyway, enough about that just now. 
Here's the short film. I hope you enjoyed that and found it useful and hopefully you learned some of the things that we talked about from earlier on in the video. I just thought I'd say that this video has been released exactly one year to the day since I released my first video, which was photography advice from Glencoe. So technically it's happy birthday to the channel. And if you fancy getting us a wee present for that, a subscribe or a like wouldn't go amiss. Thanks for tuning in this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.